Hi everyone, as promised uh, on the uh, AFSIM forums, uh, here's a comparison between the Just Flight uh, Early Spitfires and the A2A Early Spitfires. Um, so, uh, here we can see the Just Flight version. Um, this is a, a Mark 1. Um, and if we have a bit of a look around it, You can see that it has the early uh, temperate camouflage scheme where one of the underside of the wings is black and the, the other one's white. Um, that scheme was eventually dropped and uh, it was a stupidly complicated scheme with um, ones with odd serials having a mirror image of uh, the ones with even serials. They dropped all that sort of thing eventually um, and just went with one and got rid of the uh, black and white underside on the thing. Um, another interesting thing that you can see on this is um, that little diamond on the wing. If you don't know what that is, what that is is it's actually a gas sensitive patch um, because they weren't sure whether the Germans were going to use um, poison gas in the war. Uh, so airplanes had that little stick on thing on the wing and it actually changed color if it was exposed to gas So it's kind of interesting that that's on there. Of course, you don't see that on later Spitfires But uh, if you're curious to know what that was, that's what it is um, Now if we zoom in on the thing and have a look at the texturing, I'll come in real close uh, You can see that it does stand up to quite close inspection and what is interesting about it is that there's a lot of scratches on there um, so it's very very nicely detailed and the stenciling stands up to close inspection and what have you um, and that's a slightly different treatment to what A to A have done with theirs as we'll see um, so this thing's a quite battered really um, and uh, I think that's kind of nice that well, uh, you can decide for yourself when you see the A2A one whether you prefer this look or whether you prefer it um, slightly less scuffed up um, anyway you can see that that's a very nice model um, colors are maybe a little bit pale um, compared to the real thing I've actually got some parts of a, um, a Spitfire that was shot down in the Battle of Britain and excavated in the 80s and they've got original paint on them uh, and you might be surprised to see the colours of that uh, maybe I'll take a photograph of it at some point uh, they, the colours really don't look like that they're a lot different um, I'll see if I can get hold of that and uh, take a photograph for you you might be surprised to see the colours um, anyway let's take a look inside so uh, here we go inside. Uh, I'm doing this on my laptop by the way, so uh, it's a little bit laggy This isn't a particularly great machine for running uh, P3D on but um, it's the one that I've got to hand at the moment So uh, you'll just have to live with the fact that uh, it's a little bit slow. So here we are inside uh, and as you can see um, Quite nicely detailed um, I actually like the look of this and if I'm honest uh, I actually like the look of it more than the interior of the A2A one um, the A2A one's not got quite as black a panel on it and I think this is a little bit more authentic looking for the period but uh, uh, when you see that you can decide for yourself um, all of this stuff works um, you know you can flip the gun sight on and stuff like that so if you do that you can see uh, the gun sight will light up um, so that comes on and then we've got the little reticle lighting up and you can turn that off if you want to um, the gauges are all 3d and uh, nicely done there's a few things in here that, that don't work everything that you pretty much would want to work will work um, but there are one or two things that uh, are just kind of for show and some of the things that are for show have been um, they've had other things applied to them. When I get a tooltip on this thing here you'll see that uh, there you go cold uh, dark start switch um, provides cold start only and things like that so they've done some interesting stuff with it um, pretty much like I say pretty much everything that you'd want to work does work um, and it's uh, it's nicely textured and uh, looks pretty good um, just have a look at some of the stuff that works if I uh, shift E open the canopy we get that uh, and then what you've got is you've got the little access door there um, with the little latch on it that's the uh, the thing that used to catch on their uh, uniforms and rip the left sleeve of uh, 
of pilots, uh, so you can always tell a Spitfire pilot, they used to call that Spitfire sleeve. So flip that, you'll see it unlatches, and flip it again, and down it goes, like that. Um, so that works if you want. If you want to pull it up, you can hit Shift E again, uh, and that'll close that, and it'll close the canopy as well. Uh, so you've got that on there. Uh, I actually prefer on the A to A one, which we'll see. I actually prefer the DV panel. Uh, I think it's a little bit nicer done on the A to A one. We'll see that in a minute or two. But yeah, this is okay. You know, I I, I kind of like the look of the uh, look of the cockpit. One of the things that you can do on both the A to A one and the Just Flight one is you can customize the mirrors. You can see that this thing hasn't got. The little rear view mirror up top but you can add those sorts of things if you want to um, so uh, there's a little bit that you can play about with um, we'll see a little bit more of that when we uh, look at the a2a one but there you go you can see that's kind of a nice cockpit um, so let's get the thing moving I'm gonna go switch back to the external view um, so there we go we're back outside now um, most tail draggers are kind of a little bit Difficult to operate on the ground, you know, you have to sort of weave them uh, in order to see what you're going over that long nose. Um, and the Spitfire, like its uh, adversary, the Messerschmitt 109, had quite a narrow undercarriage, narrow undercarriage track, so um, it's a little bit unstable if you give it too much power and give it some steep turns. You could drop it on its wingtip if you're not careful. Um, and I think out of the two, I think the A2A one is a little bit harder to steer on the ground. Whether or not that's actually uh, something you like is entirely up to you. I think the uh, I think the the Just Flight one's a little bit more forgiving on the ground, um, or at least that's what I've found. I'm not having too much difficulty steering this thing around. Um, I'm not risking. Uh, dropping it on a wingtip. Uh, it's a lot easier to damage the propeller on the A2A one if you give it some brakes you can see it, with too much speed on it will tip up a little bit um, but I'm pretty sure the A2A one would have been over on its nose at that speed and damaging the propeller. Um, so yeah a little bit more forgiving on the ground the, uh, the just like one. Something you might want to bear in mind if you're making a decision about which one you want to go for then again you could go for both of them like I did um, so there we go get that thing lined up and uh, like I say I'm cheating here and doing it on the external view because um, otherwise I'd have to be weaving about I'm also not being very authentic to World War 2 here going off a concrete runway but uh, I am at Duxford <laughs> the default scenery uh, not much to see but, um, but there you go uh, Anyway, here we go, give it some thrall. Just roll the tail down a little bit, try and keep it straight. And that's where you're going to have to start feeding some rudder in to keep the thing straight. Get a bit of speed on. And then I'll give it some more thrall, and more and more and more. And there we go. I'll oh, just. Get that thing off the deck. And well, let's get the gear off. Now, if you're interested in buying an early version of Spitfire for your flight simulator, I'm sure you know that the very first Spitfires, if we come inside, very first Spitfires, the gear on them you have to pump a little handle here in order to get pressure up for the gear so you can see you got a little pump there and that is a little bit more forgiving on the Just Flight one than it is on the A2A one you really have to make sure that you've pumped up that pressure on the A2A one um, so that you got some pressure to get the gear up and then the actual gear retraction lever is that thing there um, so what you're going to have to watch out for on the A2A one is there's two little pegs 
that stick up on the wing, two little red pegs, one there and kind of one on the other side. They're down at the minute. Um, and when they're up, um, it's it's warning you of the position of your gear. Um, they were actually quite fragile on the real thing and tended to get knocked off when people walked on the wing. Um, so it was a bit debatable how useful that was, but um, they are there on the A2A1 as they are on this thing here. Um, so you can use those. Anyway, in the air, here we go. Now then, um, this thing, in as much as you can say um, it flies like a Spitfire in a, a flight simulator, I think it pretty much does. Um, it handles quite nicely, um, quite responsive. If I go on an external view, I'll uh, show you the roll rate. Um, so if we hit this, so come on, external view, there you go. There's my uh, laggy laptop. Um, here we go. So, on the external view, I'm going to give it a roll. Now, the observant amongst you will have noticed that like the real thing, the early Spitfires had a um, gravity-fed carburetor, which meant that if you put some neg G on the thing, or you went upside down, um, it would starve the carburetor, um, and the engine would splutter a little bit. Um, and you could see that when this thing goes upside down, the revs do drop, and that is done better in the Just Flight one than the A2A one. It does do it in the A2A1, but um, I think it's a little bit more authentic in the Just Flight one. Uh, matter of opinion, really, but um, I, to me, it seems a little bit more authentic. If I uh, if I give this some negative G by sticking the nose forward, you can hear that thing spluttering and losing power. Having said that, the actual spluttering noise that you get is more authentic on the A2A1. Um, you get kind of backfires and uh, flames shooting out of the exhaust stacks and what have you uh, as it spits some unburned fuel onto the hot exhaust stacks. That sort of thing is done a little bit better in the A2A1, but uh, the actual neg G effect thing's a little bit better in the Just Fly one. Um, feel free to disagree with me if you like. <laughs> Now, of course, the Merlin engine, for those of you who go to air shows, and I'm sure you all do, uh, or at least have been to air shows, one of the real high points of air shows is when you get a Spitfire doing a fly past, because you get that lovely Merlin engine sound as it goes past with a Doppler effect. Um, does it do it in the flight sim? Well, not really, not as much as you'd like it to, perhaps. Uh, if I put this on a flyby view, uh, we'll hear that, or rather not hear it. So, here we go. There you go. Uh, that's not really what a Merlin sounds like when it comes hammering it past you. I'm sure you all know that from air shows. Um, you get that kind of, uh, I don't know, that's kind of <laughs> type noise. Um, and it's not really doing that. Um, but, there you go. Anyway, back in the cockpit. Um, that's another thing as well. Um, I don't know if you've ever been in a World War II plane uh, or a Spitfire, if you ever sat in a Spitfire, but they are noisy as hell. They bang and clang, you know, they, you're sat in basically a metal tube, uh, and the amount of clangs and bangs that you hear when you're in a plane like that is really quite astonishing. Um, and that's one thing that the A2A Spitfire does actually do a bit better. I think that the sounds on the whole are a little bit better on the A2A1. You, you hear things like when you break it, you can hear, hear the air of the pneumatics and stuff like that on the A2A1. There's not quite so much of that going on 
on just like one. Um, so, you know, there are a few things about the A to A one that are a little bit nicer, but as we can see, um, there are some things that are nicer about the just flight one, and I personally think that the, um, the panel is something that's nicer in the just flight one. I think it's a little bit more readable um, for your air speeds and stuff like that. Um, but feel free to disagree with me. Uh, so anyway, let's see if we can find an airfield. <laughs> I'll bring this thing in for a landing. Oh, look at that! Yeah, a zip by magic. There's an airfield. As you'd expect over southern England, uh, especially in World War II, there are a lot of airfields. So here we go. Um, well, let's see if we can get a tower view, shall we? There you go, tower view. Buzz the field a little bit. Now, doing this sort of thing... When we got on the A2A one... You'll hear that that's a little bit better on the A2A one. You've got kind of all the splutters and stuff like that um, sounding a little bit more realistic. Yeah, it's not bad on this thing, but uh, it's a little bit better on the A2A one. Um, anyway, let's bring this thing in for landing. Now you'll notice that I've not really had to mess around with the engine settings that much. You can if you want to. I mean, obviously, and do this. I can come down here and I can. Uh, make sure that you know like flying pitch is on and all this kind of stuff so I've got the propeller control on 100% there um, and you know I can start playing around with the mixture and stuff like that if I want to um, so you got all that kind of business going on so there we go mixture auto lean back to auto rich um, so you can mess around with that but there isn't quite so much need to do so on the just flight one. As you can probably imagine, um, the thing that A2A are famous for is all of that AccuSim stuff where, um, you know, if you don't manage your systems properly, things start falling apart. Um, and there is, of course, a lot more, you know, the ability to service things and mend stuff and change the oil and all that kind of stuff. There's a bit more of that going on on the A2A1. Anyone who's got any of those Akisim planes will be familiar with that. Um, you probably just as well on a Spitfire because um, the um, the spark plugs on a milling engine are good for about 12 hours in real life. Uh, so if you thought your car was expensive to run, <laughs> try a run a Spitfire. There we are, going along this. Look at that. Um, almost as though I planned it. <laughs> A little bit of a flyby here, just do a simple circuit. And Spitfire's pretty easy in terms of, uh, of, you know, speeds to land and stuff like that. Anywhere around sort of like kind of 85 miles an hour or what have you with the flaps down, and you're pretty much going to be all right. Although um, you might have to give it a bit of a burst of power um, just to kind of ease it down. And, but that's one of the things that I do like about this just flight thing. I think the uh, I think the um, the speedo needles a bit easier to see against uh, that black panel. I think it's a little bit easier to spot. Um, we'll see that on the A to A one. It's not terrible. I mean, I'm cheating here anyway. I've got um, the little shift Z speed up there, and you can see that I've got uh, 240 knots. So I'm slowing down here a little bit, backing that off. And then we'll come around and uh, bring it in for a landing. Uh, now, what we'll probably see when I get the A to A one on here is because I'm, you know, not really having to mess around with the throttle settings and you know the mixture and all this kind of stuff. Um, when we get on that A to A one where that's a bit more critical, 
you can do things like boil the glycol on your engine and end up with sort of like steam pouring out over the the engine cowling and really damage things. There's not really so much of that to worry about on the Just Flight One. Whether you actually uh, whether you actually want to be worrying about that is another matter. All right, so here we go. Flaps not complicated on the Spitfire. Literally a little flip switch there. Now, there's my gear warning on. So I'll put the gear down. Now, one thing that you can say with a Spitfire, and this is a little, I think it's a little bit more accurate on the um, on the A2A one. Um, it, the, the flaps on the Spitfire really do affect the pitch quite a lot. Um, they don't do it quite so much on this Just Flight one. Um, so it's a little bit easier to fly this thing. Um, so you can see there I've got about 80 odd knots on. It's coming in all right. I'll probably have to give it a little bit of power when I get down near the ground. I'm not going to worry too much about getting on the runway because uh, most of these things landed on grass anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, anywhere around sort of like 90, 85 or what have you, depending on fuel and stuff like that, um, is going to be about right. Um, to get the thing down. Um, so there we go. Then you come. Oh, bit of a bouncer. So back on an external view. There it goes. Probably don't want to be giving it too much brakes until that tail's down. Another tail down. And then full up elevator to keep the tail down. So that when I'm hitting that brakes, I'm not pitching it over onto the nose. So there you go, that's the uh, the just flight Spitfire. Uh, it's quite nice. Um, and price-wise, it's not bad for what you get. Um, you actually get quite a few more variants in the Just Flight One, including a really early Spitfire with the um, two-bladed wooden propeller. Um, so, quite there are more models and more paint jobs in the Just Flight package than there are in the A to A one. Anyway, let's have a look at the A to A one. So. Many bet. 